Vashe magnificence, spectabilis Vashne Vaste. I'm humbled and honored by this award and greatly awed to receive it in this building. The Gothic foundations and arches, an oriel window, which is the symbol of Charles University, were parts of the original building gifted to this university by King Venstus IV in 1383, and in which Jan Hus championed the Protestant views of the Englishman John Wycliffe. Unfortunately, John Hus' views on religion brought him into conflict with the Roman Catholic Church, which resulted in the burning of his books and ultimately in him being convicted of heresy and burnt at the stake in 1418. My long and productive and much treasured association with what, which, with what was at first Czechoslovakia and after 1989, the Czech Republic began more than 50 years ago. Shortly after taking my first teaching appointment in 1957 at Glasgow University, Dr. Ivo Hodek asked me to help him to become a member of the British Ecological Society. And later, he visited me at Glasgow University. In 1963, he invited me to visit Czechoslovakia where I met other entomologists employed by the Academy of Sciences here in Prague. In particular, Drs. Yaroslav Holman and Peter Stary. In spite of all the difficulties and hazards, real and imaginary, associated with communicating with colleagues in the West, Ivo Hodek and Yaroslav Holman kept in contact with me Initially, attempts to abandon the rigid doctrinaire and essentially unimaginative Soviet form of communism looked very promising. This, the first Velvet Revolution, resulted in what became known as the Prague Spring of 1968, when the long dark winter of the great of the post-war period was briefly but very effectively interrupted. Unfortunately, winter quickly returned when the Soviet tanks rolled into Prague in August 1968, and communication with the West became difficult. However, in 1978 and 1981, Ivo Hodek again invited me to Czechoslovakia on the first occasion to meet Alois Honjek and Pavel Kindleman, and on the second, mainly to meet Marcel Rimanik. The head of biomathematics in the Institute of Entomology, which had just moved to a new and purpose-built building in Česka Budivica. I obtained the necessary funding to invite Dr. Raymanik to come and work with me in Norwich for three months. However, due to political difficulties, he was unable to accept my invitation, and then just prior to my scheduled visit to his laboratory in Česka Budivica, I received a letter from him posted in Australia saying that he and his family had defected. He strongly urged me to proceed with my plans to visit Jessica Budivica because one of his colleagues, Pavel Kindleman, was as well able as he was to help me with my research. Over the last 30 years, Professor Kindleman and I have jointly published 30 39 scientific papers on the theory of various aspects of the functional pop and population ecology of aphids and their natural enemies. The reasons we studied aphids is that not only are they plant-sucking insects which are major pests of many crops, they are also extremely interesting organisms. By way of illustration of what we've been studying, it is well known that small organisms like aphids develop much faster than large organisms like elephants. But what was not known at that time is that aphids develop much faster, even than expected considering their small size, and have rates of development similar to those of mites, which are considerably smaller than aphids. How do they do it? Each aphid is an expectant grandmother. Already developing inside her, of our offspring, that also have offspring developing inside them. 
her grandchildren. That is, each adult individual consists of three generations. If you add the time an individual spends developing inside its grandmother and then its mother, and also from birth to maturity, then the actual time it takes to complete its development is similar to that of other similar sized insects. By telescoping generations, one inside another, like Russian dolls, aphids are able to complete their development from birth to maturity very much faster than one would expect. And as a consequence, they achieve prodigious rates of increase. When we started our research, it was generally assumed that as the world was green with plants, then the abundance of insects that feed on plants were controlled by their natural enemies, among which ladybirds, slonichka, were thought to be particularly important. Although natural enemies kill large numbers of aphids, they first have to find them and then multiply faster than the aphids if they are to control their abundance. However, all their natural enemies develop much more slowly and as a consequence do not regulate the abundance of aphids. What we were able to show is that because of their prodigious rates of increase, aphids quickly overexploit their food supply. And then the resulting intense competition between aphids for food results in their starvation and a rapid reduction in their rate of increase. And also in many of them flying away to seek a better food supply. That is, they regulate their own abundance. In terms of worldwide distribution, there are more species of aphids in temperate than in tropical regions of the world. This poses the question why, especially as there are considerably more species of plants in the tropics. Aphids have little control over where they go when they fly off in search of a specific host plant, as their air speed is between 1.6 and 3.2 kilometers per hour, whereas as on most days, the average air speed exceeds five kilometers per hour. Therefore, locating a particular species of host plant among many other species of plants is difficult. The greater the number of species of plants per unit area, the fewer species there are that are sufficiently abundant for aphids to be able to locate and colonize them. That is, aphids and plants are involved in a game of hide and seek and if a species of plant is abundant enough for it to be easily found by aphids, then it is a suitable host for them, and whereas if it is rare, then it is not, which accounts for why there are considerably fewer species of aphids in the tropics than in temperate regions. I first met the late Professor Yarashik when he was working with Dr. Honyak, after which he spent two periods working with me in Norwich. Initially, we were mainly interested in the factors that determine the dramatic fluctuations that occur in aphid abundance within and between years. Then a common interest in what determines body size and the rate of development in insects stimulated us to determine whether all insects are like aphids in only being able to develop over a limited range of temperatures. And although the limits of the range in temperature differ, differs greatly between species, the number of degrees within the range is the same, 20 degrees centigrade. That is, for each species, there is a lower and an upper temperature threshold beyond which they cannot develop. And the differences in temperature between these thresholds is always 20 degrees centigrade. Our analysis of data in the literature revealed that aphids are not a special case and that species belonging to at least eight orders of insects are similarly restricted in the range of temperatures over which they can develop and reproduce. We called it their thermal window. This combined with the little data there is in the literature on the topic for amphibians, bacteria, fish and plants strengthened our conviction that this phenomenon is probably common to all organisms. 
the temperatures of which are mainly determined by that of their ambient temperatures. This stimulated Voiter to obtain funding to work on this phenomenon in plants in cooperation with Professor Pischek at the Botanical Institute of the Academy of Science. Unfortunately, what had been for me an exciting and highly productive collaboration with Voiter was, which resulted in 13 scientific papers, was brought to a sad and tragic, tragic end by his untimely death this year on the 30th, 13th of June. It now remains for me, Professor Kin Kindleman, and colleagues at the Botanical Institute to write up the results and produce a paper worthy of Voiter. Over the period I've been visiting your country, there have been great changes. Initially, there was hope of developing a separate and more generally accepted form of communism, but that all ended with the Russian invasion in 1968. Another 21 years elapsed before the second Velvet Revolution of 1989. Since then, there have been dramatic changes, not all good, unfortunately. For me, I've been fortunate indeed to find such enthusiastic and able colleagues in your country and to make friends here and enjoy their company against a background of beautiful architecture and a brave and interesting history. Your magnificence, I am deeply grateful for the immense honor you do me by awarding me the prestigious and coveted title of an honorary doctorate in natural sciences. Finally, I would particularly like to thank Professor Kindleman for being such a dedicated co-worker and supportive friend over many years, and once again, to express my very special thanks to Dr. Eva Hodek for his long-standing and treasured friendship and leadership, and for being the initiator of the series of events that led to this unforgettable day. Thank you. Jack Wheat.